Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we've got a brand new version of the previous rocket from the previous episode called the L215. Now the previous rocket was a very similar design to this, the same engines, however it had way more engines than I really needed. And this is the first iteration of revamps that the L series of rockets has gone through. Um, later on in the episode we, we knock it down even more, down to 5 engines. But we're not there yet. For the L215's first launch, we are launching up into a polar orbit for the first time. And I believe we've also maybe some science experiments. Actually, yeah, yeah, we do. Now that I remember, we had um, an ion mass detector or something of the sort. It might not be exactly that. Um, and that gives us science for biomes in low space. So having it in a polar orbit got us the most amount of biomes and the most potential science gained from that science experiment. Now, the ion mass detector is designed to get science and then transmit it back to the KSC instead of having to recover. So not being able to recover things from orbit is not a problem. We can still get all the science from this one science experiment. And the science used from these missions is going to be used to unlock some new engines on the, on the next node. Now, the L215 was launched two times. The first was a polar orbit, and the second one was also very similar, a solar synchronous orbit. Now, the way I've, I'm still doing ascent for these rockets is through KOS, and the reason being, one, it's fun, Two, you don't need extra avionics for, ever, for the entire weight of the rocket. In fact, you don't need avionics to control the rocket at all, as long as you have a script to ascend. For some reason, Smart ASS is working right here, but later on in the episode, it it stops working. And I'm not really entirely certain why. Maybe Smart ASS works with certain probe cores and it doesn't with others. I've yet to really figure that out. But as I was saying, script-wise, the difference between polar and solar synchronous is a difference of launching 8 degrees more. So. For polar, I launched negative two degrees from north, and I went north with this launch. And for solar synchronous, I also went north, um, and it was negative 10 degrees from north that we launched at to, to get the correct inclination of close to 90 and a little bit over 95 degrees. So not only did these launches get us some much needed science, it also completed two contracts along the way, getting us some also much needed funds. Now there are some flaws with the L215's design, and these are something I address in the next iteration of the rocket, the L3. Um, and some of those problems were, how many engines were needed? Well, needed isn't the right word because it turns out I don't think we did need that many engines. Um, there's a total of 15 on the first stage, I'm not certain that we needed all 15 in order to get to orbit. So there's a lot of funds being lost, potentially. There's a lot of mass being gained, potentially. And these are all things that I've only noticed after the fact. After L3 was built, I noticed the flaws of the L215. Now, to be completely honest, I'm not sure I ever would have noticed the flaws of the L215 in a timely fashion if it weren't for two mods that were recommended to me by a few people on Discord. Those two mods being RO tanks and RO engines. And after installing them and just taking a look at them in the editor for a few minutes, I can honestly tell you that I was completely impressed. At the moment now, these two mods are a game changer for me. These two mods are staying on the install and are going to be used probably heavily throughout the, the remainder of this series. I can tell you a little bit about them, just a brief summary. RO Engines takes engines from so many different mods and just revamps them to look like their actual real counterparts in real life. And it also takes all the duplicates of rockets, gets rid of them, and just replaces it with one of them of the very, very, very nice looking rocket engine. And I was very impressed with how they looked. RO tanks, on the other hand, I was even more impressed with. Now, I w didn't realize, I was under the impression that there wasn't any other procedural tanks, mods, than procedural tanks. 
But RO Tanks is completely procedural as well, except for the fact that I think it's better. The only thing procedural tanks has on them right now is the fact that you can make squares and triangles. Um, that's pretty much going to be the only reason I use procedural tanks from now on, is if I need to do that. But otherwise, RO Tanks pretty much aims to make a very modular and procedural, customizable tank with as much utility as possible into one part. And what I mean by this is in the editor, you can ch put a nose cone on it and it's still just one part. You can customize like the nose, if it angles up, if it angles down, if there's room for five engines at the bottom, a side boosters, a decoupler is just integrated into that single one part. You can adjust the size and the width and length just like procedural tanks, except it just looks so much better. And it's gonna cut down on my part counts. It's gonna, it's just gonna make the rockets look nicer and I'm gonna be excited looking at them a little bit more than I am with procedural tanks. And to be honest, procedural tanks, I think are still causing a little bit of a frame drop in the editor. Although it's not entirely gone, when I'm not using procedural tanks and using RO tanks instead, I think it may help to use RO tanks in that matter. But with both of these mods installed, I envisioned a new L series rocket, the L3, only containing five of the still RD 103s, albeit they look way, way better now. Um, they definitely look like a very old, inefficient engine, which they are an old, inefficient engine. Um, and we actually got a new engine for the upper stage, the S2.253, I think I'm, I think those numbers are right. But that engine also looks very similar, it's a very old, inefficient engine. And by that I mean it's less than 300 ISP, I think it's less than 250 ISP if I'm not mistaken. But with this second stage engine, I'm able to make the second stage a lot smaller, which probably led way to being able to have only 5 engines on the bottom stage. Now the way this rocket worked is um, taking into account that the RD-103s have a burn time of a minute, well not a burn time, a rated burn time. They can go over the rated burn time, but it's likely to fail if that happens. It's not really something we want. So they have a burn time of a minute and 30 seconds or so. And keeping that in account, the side boosters and the central tank of the first stage are all cross-fed and the fuel is going to drain from the side boosters first. So, for a minute and 30 seconds, the four outer engines will burn. About a minute into the burn, the side boosters will be depleted, empty and ready to decouple at one press of the space bar, and they'll start to burn through the central tank of fuel. Now, about a minute and 20 seconds into the flight, the central engine ignites and starts burning through the central tank as well for about 10 seconds and then i simply decouple the four boosters the moment it's decoupled the engines cut out because they're no longer connected to their fuel supply and there is about a minute and 20 second or a minute and 30 second burn remaining on the central engine so that all engines are pretty close to their burn time and we also maximize efficiency a little bit and then after that it's a simple s2 uh, second stage to an aerobe um, orbital stage and whatever small payload that we can manage to fit on there and for the L3 rockets we actually for the first time got to return things from orbit we had a payload that is capable of returning from orbit a, a science return capsule a little container a uh, small heat shield with a blader in the bottom and this is all pretty much two parts excluding whatever you put inside of it, which is very, very nice. And we had some contracts that this was able to perform. But not only contracts, just like the L215, we were doing science experiments alongside to maximize our money and science. So these contracts were basically go over 150 kilometers altitude and reach 6,500 meters per second velocity. Um, orbital velocity, I believe. And the thing is, it didn't specify that you have to be in orbit, only that you have to reach orbital speed and return. So the L3 was launched three times um, because we were given this contract three times, and the payout was incredible. The L3 costs about 7,000 funds, 
the payout for completing one of these contracts is over 200, maybe over 300,000 funds. So that's 300,000 funds each rocket. I was hoping we were, that we would get more than just three contracts. However, it, it only gave us three, probably because the balancing of that is I could have done that forever and gotten millions of funds, um, which is almost what I wanted to do, at least for a little while. But I'm happy with three. And during those three rocket launches, I believe two of them got to orbit. One of them was suborbital, but it was fast enough to complete the contract. And each one of them had some biological science samples that was able to collect science in biomes and bring them back down to Earth safely. So with our brand new rocket, we're able to increase our VAB speed, our build speed significantly, and or the, our science uh, research speed significantly. And with the science gained, we are now researching solar panels and then the geiger muller counter. Um, these are two parts that we need in order to complete the next two contracts for satellites, which is the solar powered satellite, as well as the scientific satellites, which needs one of those geiger muller counters um, in order to complete the contract. This will likely be the topic of next episode. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out. <laughs>